the mouse was inside his little apartment thinking about how nice it would be if he could go away for a vacation. To the seashore, or to a lake, or to Arizona, or... Arizona! Way out west with her cowboys and Indians and cattle, and where Tom the Cat wouldn't be around to pick on him. And then Jerry got an idea. Silly as it may sound, he'd thought of a way of mailing himself to the Wild West. So he tiptoed out to the kitchen. There he found an old cardboard box, and taking a knife, he cut out one end of it. He was so busy that he didn't notice that Tom had crept up on him. Tom was so fascinated with what Jerry was doing that he just sat down and watched. Well, Jerry wrapped the box carefully in wrapping paper and tied it with string. Then very lightly, he pushed against the paper which covered the place where he'd cut out one end of the box. The paper opened, and Jerry crawled right inside and pushed the paper closed again. Well, Tom couldn't believe his eyes. Then Jerry crawled out again and carried the box into the living room. Tom followed right behind. Jerry climbed up onto the desk with his package, picked up a pen and wrote, To the post office, Wild West, United States of America. Then he stuck some postage stamps on the package. And placing it on his shoulder, he walked out of the house and headed for the mailbox on the corner. Well, that was the moment that Tom pounced at him and began chasing him. Jerry ran along pretty quickly, but Tom was gaining on him. And then Tom stepped on a banana peel and slipped halfway down the block right past Jerry. But Jerry just had time to get to the mailbox, climb up onto it, and open the package drawer. He threw his package inside and banged the drawer closed. Tom was running back toward the mailbox. Jerry tugged at the handle of the package drawer again. It was stuck this time, but he pulled and pulled and it opened. He jumped inside and the drawer slammed right in Tom's face. Inside the mailbox, Jerry found his package and crawled inside the end just as he had when he'd wrapped it. He pushed the paper closed from inside and curled up to take a nice, long nap. Well, outside, Tom was just getting ready to climb into the mailbox himself when along came a mail truck. The mailman hopped out and emptied all of the letters and packages from the mailbox, including the one which contained Jerry, into a big mailbag. And then he drove off again. And Tom followed the truck, running as fast as he could. Well, at the post office, the mailman threw the letters and packages down a big chute. The big machine canceled the stamps on Jerry's package, and before long, Jerry was in another bag on another truck and on his way to the airport. Tom followed them again. When they arrived, still another mailman threw the bag containing Jerry and his package into an airplane. Before Tom could sneak on board, the plane took off and left Tom standing there. And then he remembered the address on Jerry's package. There really was a little town named Wild West way out in Arizona. And Jerry was going there by airmail. Well, a few hours later, the plane was flying over Wild West, Arizona. And since it was a very small town, the plane couldn't stop to leave just one piece of mail, so the co-pilot hooked a parachute onto Jerry's package and dropped it out of the plane. And down, down, down it sailed and landed lightly as a feather on the outskirts of town. Well, the postmistress came running out and opened the package. Jerry was asleep, so he didn't even notice when she opened the lid of his box. If he had, he certainly would have been scared because the postmistress of Wild West was a great big grizzly bear. Gertie the Grizzly, to be exact. Well, Gertie the Grizzly looked down at Jerry and said, Oh, how pretty, a cute little mouse. Well, that awakened Jerry. At the sight of a grizzly bear, he began to stutter. <laughs> you. Me? Why? I'm Gertie the Grizzly, the famous cowgirl. I wear a sombrero, a lasso I can twirl. But I can't go riding, you see, it's mighty tough to find a cow pony what's husky enough. Yes, sir, Bob, I'm Gertie the Grizzly, and I'm postmistress of this here town of Wild West. Say, you don't have to be scared of me, partner. I know I'm pretty big, but I'm oh so gentle. But tell me, what was you doing in this here package? So Jerry told Gertie all about how he got tired of Tom picking on him and how he got the idea of traveling to Wild West by mail. Well, Gertie grinned. She was beginning to like Jerry. Most people were afraid of her because she was so big. But once she told Jerry not to be afraid, he was as friendly with her as could be. Gertie smiled and promised, If and I ever get hold of that vomit Tom, well, I'll fix him for being so mean to a nice little fella like you. Well, just then they heard another plane. As it got overhead, another parachute dropped from it. But this time, instead of a package at the end of it, there was Tom the Cat. As he got nearer the ground, they saw that he'd pasted a postage stamp over one eye and that he had a tag with an address tied around his neck. Tom had mailed himself to Wild West, too. Well, Gertie told Jerry to run and hide and watch the fun. And running over, she caught Tom just as he was about to land. Welcome to Wild West, partner. Yes, sir. Welcome. 
Say, how about a nice ride on a real buck and bronco, eh? Well, Gertie carried Tom down to the corral where she kept her horses. Gertie put a saddle on a mean-looking bronc pony, placed Tom on top of it, and set the bronco loose. Bucked and jumped and bolted, and Tom bounced this way and that. He held the reins tightly. It was a miracle he ever stayed in the saddle. And then Gertie gave a real cowboy yell. Well, the bronco gave one tremendous buck, and Tom went flying through the air right into a bed of cactus. He leaped up into the air again and landed right on the edge of a gully. He bounced over the edge and went on bouncing, bouncing, bouncing till he hit the bottom. Well, Gertie ran down and looked at the place over his eye where the stamp had been. Hey, partner, you ain't even got a stamp on you. I'm going to have to send you back to where you come from. Well, before Tom could say a word, she tossed him into a mail sack and stuck the sack on top of a pole. And soon a plane came flying by. Gertie signaled to it, and it swooped down. Big Hook reached out of it, caught a loop in the rope around the mail sack, lifted it right into the cabin. Well, the plane screamed up into the sky again and was gone. <laughs> Jerry was laughing so hard he could barely speak, but he managed to thank Gertie. No oh, shocks hurt nothing, partner. Say, you hear that music? That's a Saturday Night Square dance. So how's about you and me going over and tripping the light fantastic, huh? So Jerry the Mouse and Gertie the Grizzly ran off to the square dance and danced and danced until dawn. They looked sort of funny dancing together. Jerry was so small and Gertie was so big, but after a while, nobody thought a thing about it. No siree, they're friendly in the Wild West. the cat and Jerry the mouse went on a vacation recently to Texas. Well, Texas is the biggest state in the whole United States and it's way out west where there are cowboys and cattle. The cowboys ride the range all day and herd the cattle and sometimes rustlers, men who steal cattle, hide out in the wilderness and try to take the cattle away from the cowboys. But whenever that happens, the Texas Rangers ride out bravely to catch the rustlers and return the stolen cattle. Well, when Tom and Jerry went to Texas, they visited Gertie the grizzly, a very nice lady grizzly bear. And believe it or not, Tom was not chasing Jerry around all day long. The reason was because Gertie the grizzly is Jerry's friend, and Tom was afraid to pick on Jerry when Gertie was around. Gertie's so big she could squash Tom just by stepping on him with one of her huge paws, so Tom wasn't taking any chances with her. But one afternoon, Tom sat around quietly and watched while Gertie showed Jerry how to make Indian smoke signals. Gertie built a very smoky bonfire, and she held a blanket over it to keep the smoke from rising into the sky. And then she flipped the blanket away, and a big puff of smoke shot into the air. <laughs> Gertie explained, You see, Jerry, by sending up the right number of puffs of smoke, I can send any messages I want to. I just... Before Gertie could finish what she was saying, up rode a dozen Texas Rangers, riding as fast as their horses could carry them. And Gertie said, Well, I'll be a coyote. There must be some cattle rustlers around here, or them Rangers wouldn't be riding so fast. I'd better go back to my house and see it's locked up. As soon as Gertie left, Tom saw his chance to chase Jerry. He crouched for a second and then made a huge leap toward where Jerry was sitting. Jerry saw him coming and started running after Gertie, but Tom gained on him rapidly. Jerry saw a couple of horses grazing nearby and he ran toward them. Well, just as Tom was about to catch him, Jerry jumped as hard as he could right onto the back of one of the horses. The horse was so surprised that he started to run. And then Tom took a flying leap right square onto the back of the other horse. Well, Tom's horse gave a whinny and took off after Jerry's horse. The chase was on. On and on, the frightened horses galloped up and down hills, leaping over things that got in their way. Well, suddenly, Jerry's horse came to a deep gully. He stopped short, and Jerry went flying through the air. Up and up and up, Jerry flew, and down he came, just missing a bed of cactus plants. Then Tom's horse stopped short, too, and Tom went flying. Up and up and up, and down he came right in the middle of the cactus. The horses watched all of this, and then they whinnied. You might almost say that the horses were giving Tom and Jerry the horse laugh. 
And then the horses turned and galloped back toward home. Tom and Jerry were left alone, lost in the middle of the Texas rain. Poor Tom, poor Jerry. They just sat and stared at each other, too tired and sore to care about chasing each other anymore. And besides, they were a little scared about being lost out on the Texas range. Jerry spoke first. He told Tom that the only way to get found again was to forget about chasing each other. They had to be friends, at least until help arrived. Tom thought for a moment, and then he held out his paw. Tom and Jerry shook paws. And then... Jerry had an idea. Maybe they could send up smoke signals just like the ones that Gertie the Grizzly was teaching Jerry to send. Tom suggested that they use one of their 10-gallon hats instead of a blanket. Well, Tom and Jerry gathered together some old tumbleweeds and cactus, and then they hit two stones together until a spark flew into the pile of dried weeds and a fire started. Tom and Jerry grabbed one of their hats and covered the blaze, but the fire was too hot and the hat burst into flame. Then they got the other hat and tried again, but the second hat caught fire too. And soon the fire was roaring, and smoke was just filling the air and sky. Well, several miles away, the Texas Rangers saw the smoke and thought that a big range fire had started. They rode quickly toward the smoke, and of course they found Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry were saved. While the Rangers were putting out the fire, the head ranger saw tracks in the dirt. And he called out, Hey, here's fresh cattle tracks. And here's some horse tracks, too. Them rustlers must have gone by here, boys. By this time, it was already night. There was no moon, and it was so dark that you could barely see the tracks in the dirt. The rangers thought they'd have to wait till morning to follow the rustlers, but Tom and Jerry had another idea. Cats can see better than any other animal in the dark, so Tom could follow the tracks the rustlers had left. Rangers mounted their horses quickly. One carried Tom and another carried Jerry. They rode and rode as Tom watched the tracks and led the way for the rangers. After a few hours, they heard the sounds of cattle and horses in the distance. They had found the rustlers. Off they set after them, and soon they found the rustlers hiding in a valley with their stolen cattle. The rangers surrounded the rustlers quietly, then they began shouting and shooting their guns. When the rustlers saw that they were surrounded, they threw down their guns and surrendered. Tom and Jerry had helped the Texas Rangers capture a bunch of dangerous cattle rustlers. They all rode back to town, taking the stolen cattle with them. The Rangers put the rustlers in jail, and then they all had breakfast. Flapjacks and bacon and coffee. Mm, boy, were they hungry. Then the head ranger got out a couple of deputy badges and pinned them on Tom and Jerry. And he said, I hereby declare you, Tom the Cat, and you, Jerry the Mouse, honorary members of the Texas Rangers. You're real tough hombres, as smart and as brave as any Texan. Boy, were Tom and Jerry proud of their badges. And was Gertie the Grizzly proud of her boyfriends from the city when she heard about their adventure? Tom and Jerry were real cowboy heroes at last. 